Good morning. Go on, Linda, with your little jives. Fan and Rudd, so dry, can I speak and how can I help? Did you have a lot of sugar? I love sugar. Ah. So I said to him, you need to stop that. Have you thought about bariatric surgery? I'm telling you, you give me that with it today. Send me now. So how much do you drink? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> You've tried giving up in the past. No, never. I enjoy it. Even though you, you know it's affecting your chest. So I had cut more food then. Yeah, but it's not just about proportions, but it's also about what you're eating as well, and also exercising. So going for walks. I mean, where there's a will, there's a way. I must say that puppy is sounding more attractive. He can't bend over to do his shoes up. How's he going to bend over to look after a puppy? <laughs>
Is Izzy okay? You need to get him to stop smoking. Sorry? You need to get him to stop smoking. Smoking makes children get three times more infections in their ears, nose, throat and chest. Even if your husband always smokes outside the house. Smokes inside the house, it's worse, but smoking just um, exacerbates infections and can make the child more likely to get infections. It's a common misconception amongst parents that they think if they don't smoke in the house that the child won't suffer. That's just wrong, wrong, wrong. The products of smoking are on the clothes and on the breath of the smoker. And children are a lot more vulnerable to the effects of passive smoking. <coughs> the effects are extremely serious. Asthma is much more common. Ear, nose and throat infections, you're more likely to develop conditions like bronchiolitis or pneumonia. And cot death is uh, about 30% more likely in the first year. He's got quite a sore throat, quite a big red, uh, swollen sore throat, and that's why he's not wanting to eat or drink much. In his airways, he has some uh, secretions, but the lungs themselves are fine. So this is really just about his throat. I'm going to give him some medication for a week. Uh, I think that will see it off. Now, we have a stop smoking service for Dad, uh, so if you can try and influence him, and he can get really help and also help with um, medication or uh, nicotine replacement to help him stop. So it's really worthwhile. He has to want to. <laughs> I know, he has to want to, yeah. That's what you've got to persuade him, yeah. So uh, five mils twice a day for a week. Mm. He's going to be like this for the next three days. Thank yeah, you good. So much. You're very welcome. Thank you, yeah, not at all. You're welcome. And hopefully, um, Fires will settle down. Yes. So I think he will. <laughs> What's your New Year's resolution? Oh, I don't make New Year's resolutions. Because oh, you're always breaking that name. So, like, years ago, when I wanted to give up smoking, I mine. gave myself a date, said, so that's, that's when I'm going to do it. Right. And I did. Mine's to join the gym. Is it? Yeah, I'm going to get well fit. Take a seat. Well, I went and had one of them Blue Cross medical things, so I don't know if you know about it. Wow, so you've got a thesis written about you. Um, so this shots. is your blood result, was it? One part on it, so I've got a heart of a 90-year-old. Got a heart of a 90-year-old? Yeah, so also, <laughs> so, I'm grossly overweight. And so, I know I'm overweight. So all good news, then? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one, the classic, very overweight. Yep. My weight yep. is 13 stone, 4 yeah. pounds. I wouldn't call that grossly overweight, would you? Really? Um, so it depends what your BMI is. So your BMI is is just over thirty, yeah. um, which, which which is overweight. It's actually in the obese category. <coughs> oh. Hello, hello. Hi. So you're here for your COPD review today. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So how's things with your chest? Yeah, all right. I've had no coughs or nothing. Really good since I've been on that. Oh, right. Very good. So you're taking um, purple inhaler, a little purple inhaler, and a green capsule. Good. Lovely. Absolutely fine. And do you smoke, Helen? Yeah, I do. How many are you smoking? It's about ten a day, but that's not gone to roll up, so I don't smoke cigarettes. Okay. And um, any any thoughts of giving up? No, not really. I'm not ready yet. Yeah, I have cut down though. Down an awful lot. So how many grams is that then? If it's raw, lots? fifty grams. I smoke a week. Fifty grams a, a week. week. So it works out about ten cigarettes a day. About ten a day, yeah. Okay. And you've tried giving up in the past? No, never. No. No interest. Just, just cut. Oh, you just you're not Don't interested. Worry about. No, I enjoy yeah. it. Even though you you know it's affecting your chest. Yes, but then. It's not not since I've been on that. F feel better with the yeah, inhalers? Yeah, a lot better. Got no coughs. Well, if you did decide that you wanted to give up, we do have a smoking cessation clinic here. Yet. No, I know, I'm I not know, saying yeah. you have to do right. it now. But um, if you did decide, you just book an appointment with okay, her. She yeah. always has available appointments, so... All right, so coughing? Do you cough at all? No, not at all. No? No phlegm? No. no. What about breathlessness? Any no. problems there? just get up. Hot flushing. <laughs> <laughs> do you normally get any chest infections in the winter? I do, yes. 
So I can't tempt you to have the flu vaccine to see if it might help with your winter chest infection. Well, I don't like it. I've never had it done, so... So, you've got your little purpley, purple and white inhaler. Look at the state of it. Gosh! And do you clean it out at all or no, not? No, I didn't know you had to clean it out. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably why it's like that. Yeah, I'll give you another one of these, but you can wash them out. <laughs> it must be. You've got half your medication in there. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm losing weight, I'll tell you that, because yeah. my belt... Yeah. I've gone down, I've gone up one, not just... Yeah. Got well, you need, to, you need to continue doing that, and obviously yeah. the, the best oh, ways oh. of doing that is through your diet and your lifestyle. Oh, um, yeah. If I'm being honest, I think what you need to focus on and what your take-home point from, I think, all of this yeah. is, is your weight, yeah. OK? Because uh, you'll be surprised how much of an improvement on your overall health losing some weight and bringing that BMI number down, your, your proportion of your weight to your height, bringing that number down will have on your overall sense of well-being but also your risk of having things like heart attacks and strokes. I don't drink. I mean, I do have a drink. Yeah. But I never drink. Because I drive, I never drink two, yeah. two pints. So it's, I think what you need to do is focus on your exercise, because the rest of your checks were OK, but it did show that you are overweight. So losing weight and exercising, I think, is going to be the key here. Well, as I said, I had to cut more food then. Yeah, but it's not just about proportions, but it's also about what you're eating as well, and also exercising, so going for walks. It doesn't have to well, be... I can't walk very far, but I've got arthritis, both my knees and both okay. my knees. It doesn't stop you swimming. I mean, where there's a will, there's a way with yeah. these things. And I think it's, you know, easy to blame lack of exercise on, on arthritis, but there are ways around it of low-impact exercises that won't involve you running yeah. or putting a lot of stress through your joints that will still be good for your heart. But the, the take-home message from today, I think, is that you need to work on your weight. I mean, I think I think started doing sit-ups and yeah. um, touch my toes and five yeah. or ten minutes in the morning, that yeah. sort of thing. And, uh, but, I mean, I stopped it for a while. Yeah. Well, I think you need to crack, feel, get back on with that. Yeah. Okay, Zeph. That... Yeah, I think exercising will help. <laughs> All right, then. We'll right. see you in about a month. Well, I have to sit down because I keep losing my trousers. You keep losing your trousers? You're losing weight, then? Yeah, look. That's good. I wish I was so good. It's not coming off in the right places. I think it's on my legs and... Mine always it comes off my legs and my bum. Lastly, we'll go on my boots. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over the place. Come and take a seat. God, I've been walking, rushing on my feet. Oh, it's good. Whew. How you doing? I'm not too bad, yeah, good. considering. Considering what advanced years. <laughs> No, you're doing well. I mean, you know, it's hard to believe, you know, when I look at you, you're meant to be 59. Yeah, I'll be 16 in four months' time. Yeah, exactly. So you look about 30. Oh, thank you very much. I'll say that to my husband. Yeah, <laughs> tell him. He must be keeping you young somehow. <laughs> you sent me a letter. Oh, to come in for your room. Yeah. yeah. So how are things going along that line? Oh, it's been all right. Only I've got some pain sometimes in my fingers, pain bit. and needle, and in my knee, because i going up and down up the and stairs. Downstairs, yeah. so. Although I think your last lot of bloods were pretty good, weren't they? Yeah, I had it. Was it last week or the week before, I think? Yeah, so, for instance, when you look at your inflammatory markers, you know, if, if your rheumatoid was really playing up, you'd expect it to be going through the roof. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's not. It's really... Good. It's really low. Then my blood pressure, it's down now. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So to me, it's very good, I say, yeah, because I got, I'm stress-free now. It's stress-free? Why is that? No, because I used to do a team leading job. Yeah. I was too much, so I just give up. You gave up? We are seeing more and more patients who are more and more stressed. Uh, we can uh, suffer from um, tremor, uh, sweating, palpitations, stomach cramps, anger and irritability. So what are you doing now instead? I just did a normal cleaning. Normal? Yeah, OK. Normal cleaning. And so. not in charge of anybody else? Oh, no, no, no. Just do what I have to do and go home. Oh, what a nice I idea. I stress somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you... <laughs> Somebody has to get stressed. Oh, my goodness me. People can help their friends or colleagues who are under stress just by being there. I think having support or a support network is really essential in today's life. Uh, being able to talk to somebody about their problems uh, and the uh, things that are causing them stress is really essential. Thank you for coming in. That's OK. <laughs> I don't know when you're going to see me probably after my 60. I'm yes. Going... Yeah, I'm going... What are you doing for it? Oh, I'm going to Seychelles to celebrate it. Are you? Yeah, oh. most of the family is over there. So we're just going to celebrate. Excellent. Yeah. You, you enjoy yourself. Yeah, my sister's coming as well, so my nephew. 
they knew who that he'd come in with me, so that would be. Yeah. Good on you. Well, thank you very much. Good to see you. Take care. Well done. Bye. Bye. How are you? The severity of the business yeah. has gone. You know, the severity is a lot less. Good. It, it reduced. Yeah. Good. But I ended up on the floor the other night. You know. Yeah. And did you didn't injure yourself then? Fell on the side. Did you? OK. 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 And did, did you have a, a bruise or a cut or no. anything there? No. And did you think about uh, having this manoeuvre I was describing done uh, to send the dizziness away completely, or do you think it's settling would by it, itself? Would it take, send it away completely? Well, that's the idea. You, there's no guarantees. Yes, no, there's no, no guarantees think, with this, but we could do it. I'd rather have the manoeuvre. Yeah. And not take more tablets. Would you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm quite happy to do it. Do you think you'll be comfortable lying flat? Yeah. Once I'm flat, it might back might twin through. A little, yeah. So, so that's what we'll do, and we'll see how you get on. Oh. Sorry, I'm just doing my exercises. My old dear, she's thinking of getting an exercise machine. Now, is the exercise machine any good for me? Yeah. Exercise is yeah. good for everyone, yeah. including the old ticker, will it? Do you do any exercise? Not an awful lot. Yeah, what, what work do you do? Admin. OK. Do you do any regular exercise? Fishing season starts this week, so I normally I can carry a big bag, and I can walk up to three or four miles in a day. Yeah, so, yeah. I don't think I the gym or anything. Mm. How you doing with the gym and everything? Yeah, not too yeah. bad. I need to get back into shape. Man. Yeah. After having a baby, it is so hard. Do you know walking football? No, I've not. No? Heard. It is what it says it is. Mm. It's for more mature people. Old kids like me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to keep you in this position now for about 30 seconds or so. Have you ever been to a physiotherapist to get back exercises? They, they wouldn't do it because of the pain it was causing me. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Well, the, the way of um, getting rid of your back pain is through some exercises, which you'd need to do on a daily basis. Yeah. They say that exercise is the best anti-inflammatory. If you're doing exercises on a regular basis, you'll have less back pain. So if I, if I had a puppy at walk, Every day. Take no notice. He's not having a puppy. <laughs> oh, that's a bit cruel. Yeah, but if I, if I get a doctor's note, so I need it. <laughs> yes, this is what we call social prescribing. Yeah. Uh, if I prescribe a puppy, then a puppy... He lives with you. <laughs> <laughs> Only a small puppy, mate. <laughs> Good. OK, so bring yourself right round again. Good. Onto my back. Yeah, just as you were. Just reverse it on, at your own speed. Well done. That's right. Good. Up you come. Nice and slowly. Well done. Yeah. Well done. What's the matter? You've gone dizzy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what you can often find. But... That's as much as I do in a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to see you do more. I think so that would... Lie. Yeah, I think it would be really helpful. I must say, that puppy is sounding more attractive. Uh, Dr O'Donnell, the... come on now. <laughs> he can't bend over to do his shoes up. How's he going to bend over to look after a puppy? Usually, when people get pets, they become more active. Quite a lot of evidence about the health benefits of having pets. I'm just thinking about you and what would be for your health benefit. Yeah. So, you know, a dog you can manage. Oh, uh, yeah, only a little yeah. Jack Russell, you know? A, a nice, friendly dog that you can manage. Yeah, so uh, I can try it to snap at the voice. Yeah, 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 good. <laughs> Wait for about a week until you see the, the full effects of this. Right. Well done. You did much better than I thought you would do. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I've got an appointment with a doctor. Oh, I can't believe you just put that drink there. I really want a Coca-Cola right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask my partner to bring me one. Mr Marek Malik. Hello. Hello. Thanks for waiting. My name is Dr Bajona. How can I help you, Mr. Malek? Yes, I've been here last month. Yes. Uh, with some other doctor. I'm drinking too much. Yes. Yeah. And I actually can't go to the work, nothing. When you say you, you have a drink problem, what do you mean by that? I'm drinking every day. All right, so how much do you drink? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How do you quantify your drink? I'm drinking a cider. 
Yes. Yes. You know the big bottle. I don't yes. know. Yes, three liter, three liter. Three liter one, seven and a yes. half percent. Yes. So it's like one and a half a day. Yes. I'm not get, getting myself drunk. I'm just, uh, I just have to drink it. Yeah. yeah, if you don't drink, what happens? I got headache. Shaking. Shaking hands. I'm vomiting in the morning with yes. the phlegm and everything. So how long have you been drinking this heavy? This, this, is, not, this, this is not heavy. I was drinking heavier. I, I can see that you have definitely got alcohol problem. Yeah. You're drinking way excessively than what you should be. Because you're saying that you're drinking mainly just to feel normal. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. If you don't drink, you will have aches and most likely you might end up having a fit which can kill you. Yeah. How about the money? How are you doing financially if you're not working? She's working. Mm. I'm taking money from her. Yeah, All right. So the thing is, I've been supplying it for so long now, and the thing is, in my head now, if I don't give him the money, he's going to end up in hospital again. Yes, I can understand. And yes. it's getting really bad. Like what you need to do is obviously to get into uh, alcohol service again. Mm -hmm. You need to get detoxed. Once you get detoxed, you engage yourself into uh, AA, Alcohol Anonymous. Uh, I will obviously write to them as well, but they expect the patient to come by themselves then they know that the patient actually wants to do it. If he doesn't go, you let us know. You come back here. Yeah? yeah. Sure? Yeah, I will, I will. We know that the people who are drinking alcohol, they don't eat very well, and that's why we prescribe vitamins. Mm. Yeah? yeah? So I'll do a prescription for that. Okay, you need to have a blood test, especially with your liver function. Okay. Yeah? Okay. So All right. Maybe I'm gonna okay, thank you. Now. Yeah? Thank you very much. Okay, then. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. You have a smoking nurse Fifth. here? Yes, we do. Could I book an appointment to see her? Okay. They've put £1.20 on a packet of cigarettes. Oh, that now makes it over £7 a day. That, I thought, no, Kev, you, I'm sorry, mate, you're a fool, but you've got to stop this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what it's doing to your health. You know yes, yeah, it's just true. ridiculous, yeah. my love, it's silly. Yeah. That's a good decision. <laughs> I just don't want to think about smoking at the moment. Thank you, Ralph. That's what she said. That's this Wednesday. This Wednesday, 10 45. Do you know when she'll see you? Thank okay. You very much. Yeah. Bye bye. How are you today? I come in last Wednesday. Um, my throat was really sore. Yes. And closing up. The swelling's gone a bit, but the infection, everything's still there. Yeah. I've got a lot of burning all down here. Mm. I'm really achy okay. and struggling. I'm gargling salt water every hour. Yes. And it is just... When did this all start, John? Just over a week ago, Sunday. Bro, any cough? Yes, the cough. The cough's just been... Because I've got a normal sort of smoker's cough. I'm not a heavy smoker. Okay. I've cut, I'm in the process of trying to wean myself off. Good. The cough has been getting worse. Okay. I'm bringing a bit more stuff up. What colour's the mucus now? It could be a little bit of green in it. Any or... wheezing? Yeah, a bit, but I have been diagnosed with asthma Reese. Well, yeah. COPD, but she said it's at the moment it's more like an asthma. OK. But I still walk, and I walk at a brisk pace. And when I was first diagnosed, I got a pedometer to see how far I was walking. I was doing yeah. 13 miles. Wow, OK, a day? A day. Very good. That's so, better than me. I do overtake some joggers. I'd probably be the person you'd be overtaking, to be honest with you. Even though I in smoke. Terms of the, in terms of the smoking, how much do you smoke? I mean, I reckon at the maximum it's about seven or eight a day. Have you um, had help from our smoking cessation no. clinic? So getting help from the smoking cessation clinic has proven to be far more effective than trying to do it by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And with your history of COPD with a lung disorder, it's massively... Oh, important. no, it comes to a point in your life where you just realise you can't do it anymore. Good man, but it sounds like you're absolutely on the right track, Jonathan. So you, you want to change, yes. which is the the biggest hurdle, which is good. So just pop your finger in there. Huh? Stopping smoking is one of the best things a person can do to improve their health. After a person stops smoking, within three days, they can feel their breathing becomes easier. From weeks to months after stopping smoking, they'll have more energy. You'll feel less tired. There's improved fertility and sexual function. After a year, the risk of heart disease is half that of a person who's continuing to smoke. Ha! Sorry. That's okay. See, it's just like that. It's yeah, dirty okay. little bits. And... Okay, grab a seat. Okay, Jonathan, we definitely need to continue antibiotics. You only had seven days of those antibiotics. Yeah. Usually, for 
Yeah, it's, it's a 10 day course. Glad you came in. Let's get it better. Okay, thank All right, you. Very much. Well, it's me, Jonathan. One sugar for me, Ryan. Okay. I've, I've cut down. Dr. Nanda told me I was diabetic. Wait, today. Happen, so yeah. I'll just... Thank you. You're a star, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Amrit. Come in. Come and take a seat. Your mum, yeah? Yes. OK, and this is Amrit. Yes. How can I help? Um, now, Amrit started off by having, like, a few little pimples on the side of his head. Oh, yeah. But it's actually then it started getting... It got septic mm. and the burst and then become blotches. OK. So, so when did this start? It's been about a week. OK, so it, did it start with one pimple or...? It, yes. It started with this one. OK. And then, can you see how it spread? Mm. And there's some hair. Now it's getting really, like, it's like scabby. Okay. And it started there. It sort of gets a bit sore in the evening oh, and on this side. Yeah. So where it's like... itchy? Yeah. They're itching. Mm, and I can see and actually it's fine now. Is there a yellow pus coming out? Yeah. Like, is it clear or yellow, Mum? Have you seen? Mm. And it's coming on this side as well, if you can have it. Right yeah, there. I'll pop a pair of gloves and we'll have a it's feel itching. now. It's itching. Yeah, it's itching. Ha has anyone else in the house got a rash at the moment? And do we know what caused this? Did you remember being bitten by an insect? Anything at all? Okay. She thought it was eczema and she showed me eczema thing like it could go all over your body. <laughs> I mean, if we left it, it potentially could go to bigger yeah. parts of your See? scalp. So. so we need to, and I googled it. So yeah. I was saying to him, we, should, we must cut out your sugar. Mm. But he does eat a lot of chocolate. Do you? So do you have a lot of sugar? On average, kids in the UK are consuming three times more sugar than they should be doing. Sugar can cause dangerous unseen fat deposits in children's bodies, especially around the vital organs. And this can start at a very young age. So we do encourage parents to cut back on a children's sugar intake. I love sugar. <laughs> So I said to him, you need to stop that. Yeah, yeah I'm addicted to sugar as well. I've seen a rash similar to this, actually. Okay. It tends to be bacterial. So the normal bacteria on our skin is called Staph aureus, and that produces that clear, um, yellow kind of pus. Let's have a look at this. It's like a number of allergies and things that are going yeah. But can you see where it's, like, now spreading? Yes. Normally, we would give a topical or an oral, um, basically, antibiotic. I think, because this is actually spreading, we're going to have to go for the oral antibiotic or flucloxacillin. Is he allergic to anything at all? Penicillin, anything? No, maybe. He's had amoxicillin. Yeah, he's had that. Um, with the um, creams and things, try to leave it dry. Um, but if it's itching, obviously, don't try to put any oils or things on it. So what are these toys you've got? These are from the Kinder Eggs, but I don't eat them anymore. Because they've got a lot of sugar. <laughs> I've got only these three. They're from the cartoons. Really? That's the antibiotic. Um, one spoon four times a day. Mm. Oh, lovely. Thank you. All right, then. Nice yeah, to meet you. you. Take it. Oh, don't forget your green one. Here you Come go. on, you. <laughs> such a cheeky. Oh, God, you're such a rascal. <laughs> How are you? Just take a seat. Thank Hi, how you. are you? Jacqueline. Hello. Uh, very good. Nice to see you. And you. Good. So, um, what can I do for you today? I believe we're here for results of blood tests. Results. OK, so let's just have a look. You had a, a kidney function test done on Friday, and that was very good. But your sodium is low. Um, sodium is something that's in your blood. Sodium chloride is salt. This is probably the lowest it's been, at 126. My dad it does drink alcohol. It, would that be a cause? It could, yeah. What do you drink? Is it beer you drink? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. A week, a week longer. Yeah, mm-hmm. And how much of it would you drink in a day? It used to be about six when I was watching the football. But yeah. the last week or so, it's been maybe just two or three. Two or three. And is that what it's like normally, two or three a day? No, it used to be... Twice that. Twice that, six, yeah. But, I mean, low-risk drinking would be um, something like a maximum of a pint and a half a day. So it probably would be a good thing to cut it down, not just from six to three, but from three to one and a half. I, well, I don't believe that it's only for two or three some days. That's yeah. my opinion. What do you believe is the average? <laughs> I think that he probably drinks. 
mm-hmm. between three and six, depending on the day and yeah. who you had round or what you've yeah. been doing. Yeah. And my dad has drunk for a long time. I can't just tell him to stop. No, no, and I wouldn't have to stop. I would, I would, well, I wouldn't have them stop. It's just that drinking um, more, really, than a pint and a half in a day is going to expose you to risks uh, in terms of your liver, your stomach, and killing liver and brain cells. So it's good to just be a low-risk drinker and manage your risks. I'm not trying to be a, a smart-ass, but I've always known the risks. Yeah. It's up to you to, uh, to decide what level of risk you're happy with, but the snag is, as you get older, those risks turn into reality. And, uh, and that's the problem. Then the chance of them happening goes, climbs up to, you know, 70, 80, 90%. I mean, that's nearly a guarantee that they're going to happen. Now, not all of them, but not none of them. So it would just make sense to sensibly cut down as much as you can. If you need help with that, there is help available. So that's a urine test and a blood test. If you could make an appointment. Next week. Yeah, yeah. in about a week's time. Brilliant. Good. Good. Thank you yeah, so nice much. You. Yes. Yeah, Have nice. a lovely yeah. day. Yeah. yeah, and you. Take care. Bye. There you go. Go steady. See you. Yes, bye now. What are you, Kearney? What? Any New Year's resolution? I'm going to drive. You're going to drive? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. Cos that's... By April, I'll be driving. That's achievable. Yeah, that is. Not like me. No, neither. I failed my test three times for us. Oh, my God, I've got oh, mine booked for the 7th. <laughs> February the 7th, mine's booked. What, your driving test? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm probably scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm probably scared. <laughs> How are you coping with everything? Oh, the legs are killing me. They are swollen, aren't they? Like yeah. a little, yeah, Crazy. on the feet, yeah. And then when I wake up in the morning, they're still swollen. On the left side? Same. Nothing won't move. My whole mm. body doesn't want to move. They see it's sore when you press that. Yeah, yeah. Everything feels sore on the back. Mm. When I lay down to go to sleep, and I'm like literally mm. re- at rest. Okay. The back of my shin hurts. Mm. I've got a chair that can pick my legs up, and that kills me because the back again. <laughs> It's touching. And you've got very dry skin. Are very. You, are you applying any creams at all? I can't do it, can I? I can't oh. reach because I'm arthritic up here. Mm. I can't do anything, nothing at all. So there are many reasons why we, uh, people end up with swelling in the legs. Well, one of the main reasons is any internal system failure, like liver failure or kidney failure. Or heart failure. Um, or heart, heart failure. So obesity itself, um, you'll have uh, circulations, like a circulation. And for that, we tend to advise, of course, leg elevation and stockings and everything to help. Anything just to stop this That's right. Heaviness. Have, have you ever been tried on stockings at all? Never. Never. To try that okay. uh, and see whether that would help with your leg swelling. So I'm always out of breath. Mm. You know, I get as far as my door to open it for somebody. Yeah. And I feel like I've run a marathon. I finally get you in the room. <laughs> <laughs> No, no blood. <laughs> we done it already, didn't we? So I'm just going to check your blood pressure and then I'll just make sure you're all right. My sugar's not back yet. <laughs> They're back. They're better than what they were, um, but they're still a little bit high. Do you drink any alcohol? No. Smoke? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of dietary, how are you doing? I think I eat a lot of bad things because um, I send the children out every other day to yeah. get me a sponge cake, jam sponge cake, <laughs> which is not good for my no. diabetic. Yeah, all the sugar in that and the jam. <laughs> OK, so we need to stop with the sponge cake. Are you eat, is it a whole sponge cake you're eating or just a slice? Just a slice. Every day? Yeah. Oh, gosh, no. No, no, no. <laughs> right. And then what about carbohydrates? I eat rice. Yeah. yeah. A lot of rice? No, a lot. No. Okay. Rice. And fruits? Do you, do you eat a lot of fruits? No, I do eat a lot of fruit. I eat yeah. a lot of mangoes. Yeah. I would okay. eat two, three mangoes a day, sit down and eat two, three mangoes. All in one go? <laughs> yes. Oh, my word. Right. So, yeah. So, mangoes, fruits are fine. Yeah. But too much fruit in one go, again, a, a lot of sugar, because fruits contain a lot of sugar. Yeah. yeah? So, try to space it out. <laughs> Any questions? Any worries? Any concerns? 
yeah, I, I want to. Some days I'm feeling up. Some days I'm feeling, feeling a bit down. down. Yeah. Is it okay? Is it lifestyle or do you, do you have do you do things at home? You know, yeah. do you have any hobbies or anything like that? I was to go to the gym, but I stopped. No, I stopped. go to the gym. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, go. Yeah. Join join back on there because exercise helps. Yeah. It really helps when you're feeling low. It does. It helps. Yeah. It, the body releases things that it needs to get rid of. No, don't sprint on the <laughs> treadmill. <laughs> but no, exercise is really good. But yeah, I mean, if you're feeling really down. And it's getting to the point where you feel like you need to see, speak to someone. Yeah, yeah that's why yeah, we're here. Yeah? yeah? And I'm always about as well. I can always help. Yeah, yeah. Lovely. All right, good to see you. Yeah, yeah. Let me get the door. Take care. Yeah, yeah. All right, bye-bye now. Bye. I eat and I feel like I'm full up with every mm. little meal I have. I mean, I eat in the morning about 8. Have you thought about bariatric surgery? I'm telling you what, you give me that with it today. Send me now. I'd have anything. Do you know what I'd like to be like her again? Mm. Because, Doctor, for years I was a dancer, mm. a singer on stage. I was always slim. It's worthwhile touch basing that if you're interested. I am. I can see it. 100%. <clears throat> yeah. I just want to be me again and be able to walk up the street. Yeah. Realistically, we need to look at that now. Brilliant. Bariatric surgery has um, had its fair share of controversies. When patients are obese, there's a perception it's a self inflicted uh, condition. Uh, what one needs to remember is, although the bariatric surgery costs money uh, in terms of thousands of pounds, for example, a gastric bypass can cost up to 8,000 pounds, it reduces all the multiple long-term complications, which would take much more from the NHS in terms of the um, spend. Is that OK? Yeah, that's 100%. Let's do it. You're a darling. Lovely. You're an angel. All the best. Good to see you today. Yeah, it's good to see you too. You don't look a day older. <laughs> they're old. <laughs> but I'm too stoned up there, yeah. All right. So that's my older, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Doctor. All the best. Take care. Coffee. I don't drink caffeine full stop now. Oh. Then you have your own tea bags. I gifted it up, I did. <laughs> Hard work. Huh? Do you not miss it? No. Really? No. Been easily nine months. Wow. Good girl. Bruno Bassano. Hello. Hello. I Come in and take us. Oh, well, I've been here nine years. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm registered with you now. No, you registered with Dr. Dr. Bolger. She got like. Uh, she's very good. She's tough as cooking. You tough well, as well? Well, if. I lost one half stone. I've been in very well for the last four or five months. My cholesterol got down as well. My blood pressure's got down. My feet is fine. The only thing that isn't fine is your diabetes. Well, I have to work on it. Really not good. It's got worse. Is it? Mm. What else should you do? Well, that's the question. Do you have a sweet tooth? Do you eat lots of sweets? Sometimes, yeah, Yorkie, that's all I eat. Well, I eat one bar of chocolate to Yorkie almost every day. I like that. Ah, I'm, okay. I'm a sucker for that. Right. Once a week. Not every day. <laughs> Not every day. Yeah, okay, that, because I go to work and I don't eat because I, I'm, a, I'm a bus driver. Sure. I work in the airport and I, I don't eat at all, in the, especially in the afternoon when it's afternoon mm. shift. Sometimes I just take one Yorkie bar and a couple of bottles of water. That's all I do. I don't eat mm. nothing. I think that's good. Make my diabetes go up. Chocolate? chocolate is terrible stuff for people who have diabetes. I have yeah. I, I have to. The, the problem with chocolate yeah. is it's not only has it got sugar in it, it's got lots of fat in it as well. Yeah. So on both counts, it's really not good. And the fat yeah. slows the sugar release, which is not good sometime, either. Sometimes I'm going to be not put the mains on, on, on the fire. Now and again, I, I have a pint of lager. That is allowed. Oh, bloody hell. Life's too short not to have a pint yeah. of lager. But the chocolate, I do eat it. Yeah, the chocolate, we have to stop. OK. And what we'll do is we'll check you again in three months' time and see how you're yeah, doing. Yeah, no, I will cut that down. OK, okay. science. Dr. Holland, All right. nice to see you. Take nice care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right. Bye, Mr. Vassana. I shall tell Dr. Bolger yeah. it's she easier to see the Pope. <laughs> oh, dear. <clears throat> Thank you. See you around. Bye -bye. Thank you. So for my New Year's resolution, I've decided I'm going to try and get some more sleep. Nice to see you. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you take care, Mr. Said. Yeah. Bye now. I make resolutions all the time, so I don't wait for January the first. So I probably have about 150 or 200 resolutions every year. Cheers. Nice Thank to you. see you. <laughs> Cheers. Bye bye. I need to look at having a much healthier diet in 2017. Take care. Good luck with everything. Thank bye. You. Bye. bye. My own New Year's resolution is to definitely cut back on my sugar intake and to uh, maintain my regular daily exercise. Bye-bye. <laughs> We're friends now, excellent. <laughs> my New Year's resolution is to focus more on my sports and exercise, um, especially football, so hopefully one day I can sign for Liverpool Football Club. All right, yeah, then. Better safe than sorry. OK, then don't get your skittles oh, yeah, unless you. you're leaving them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Right. This year, I want to ensure that my life is full of more singing, more fun and more laughter. How you doing? Well, I cut my hand the other day. I'm really sorry if this is like a waste of time and everything, but okay. I'm worried. Right, I was doing a washing up, had yeah. my hand in a bike glass, went across, cut it, went to A and E. As I've been working and everything, because yeah. I've had to still go to work, I think all the cups open. Yeah. I don't know why I'm wrong, but when I'm holding it, I can't really lift my fingers up, and I don't know if I've damaged something. It just got me. OK, worried about it. Really worried, because I need my hand yeah, to do my job. You're right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. OK. When was the actual injury? Wednesday night. Wednesday night last week? Yes. OK, and so you went to A&E straight away after that? We went to the walking centre, but yeah, A&E. And you were saying that you were washing? I was washing. I had my hands inside a pint glass and it yeah. broke and I twisted and it. Really, yeah. OK, fine. If I try and force it up, okay. it's really like I shouldn't be forcing it. Show me. Can you show me what you mean? So if I just do it, if I... If is that your wrist as well as the fingers? No, I can hold it on. But you can't get the fingers up. You can't tell me. Just put your hand down. Because I've got to keep working everything. You're a fit... You're a... I fit sh yeah, shutters and doors and doors. drive stuff. Can you feel me touching your fingers along there? Yeah. Same as the other side? If it was a bit faint that side, but yeah, I can feel that. Just squeeze my fingers for me. What's stopping you in here? Pain? You feel the stretch, or is it that you physically can't do it? OK, you can relax again. Ouch. Push up against my finger? No, I can't, I can't even, no. no. That one. Have neat to call. Hi, come in. Right, so what we're going to do today is we're going to start the vaccinations, OK? So today there's three injections and one medicine in the mouth. Okay. okay. So the one in the mouth is to protect the lining of the gut. Mm -hmm. Okay, so because a lot of babies get diarrhea and vomiting, they end up in hospital really dehydrated. A side effect which I've never seen, but I'll just tell you about, is a problem with the gut, strangely enough, okay? <laughs> The other three injections we're going to give in her legs. Okay. One of them is the meningitis B, and the research shows that it's quite likely she might develop a temperature with okay. that one. Buy yourself some paracetamol, the brand name's Calpol, and that should be enough just to settle her temperature. So I'm going to draw up the vaccines, okay. yeah? Oh, bless her. Are you feeding her yourself? Oh, wonderful. So that's what she's waiting for, isn't yeah. it? Oh. So if I can't hold her, she's going to cry. Of course she will. Of course she will. <laughs> You're scared of them. I'm more scared of it than she Oh, bless you. <laughs> I know, okay. it's not milk, is it? <laughs> OK. I heard you. <laughs> right, hold still. All done. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Oh, do you want paper towel as well? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll keep oh, you, you're still going. Oh, bless you. She's all right. 
OK, so make an appointment on the way out for four weeks' time, baby clinic. That's all right. You can stop crying now. We're finished. That's all right. See you again. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, thank you. Just need to put my baby's fourth week injection. You just came in with that cute little baby. I yes. hope you feel really horrible making her have an injection. Did she cry? No. Yeah, even the mother cried. <laughs> do you know what? I never used to take mine. I used to make my husband take them. Yeah. And do you know what? He found the, the best way to get the heat out of it. Get a, on a, one of the small cans, put it in the fridge. Yeah. And when it's had it done, just rub it on it. Just takes the heat out. OK. Thank you. That is not looking that great, is it? It's looking a bit infected. Does it? But at least it's dry. Okay. And this one. Sorry. So well, I just don't want to look at it in a second. It looks quite deep, isn't it? So I want you to leave that there. I'm going to get one of the nurses to come up so they can sort out a dressing for us. Okay. And then I'll talk to you about what I think we should do about the actual thing itself. I'll be back in a second, right? Thank you very much. Mr. Arif. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. Just take a seat. How can I help? Um, now, these uh, blisters come on. Mm -hmm. um, here, 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 mm -hmm. uh, here. And uh, somebody told me that they, you can get plaster from the surgery or something. No, you you would just use cream for those. You wouldn't use a plaster for those. Yeah, I punctured the bloody thing. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yes. I I don't think that's such a good idea, isn't it? No, you could you could introduce infection. Oh, I see. And then it could flare up. What do you puncture them with? A sewing sewing needle. Sewing needle. Yeah, yeah. No, because like, sewing needle would not be sterile. Oh no. So it might be clean, but I it wouldn't really, be sterile. I usually put it under the hot water tap and. Well, that's good, um, yeah. or boiling water, but yeah. still not a good idea. Right, no, th this that. is a form of inflammation of the skin called pomphalix. It's a type of eczema. Used to you have eczema in the past? Is that something you've had for many I years? had eczema in 2011, actually. Was that the first time? First time in my life. You can get eczema at any, at any stage. What brought it on, do you think, in I have no idea, actually. Mm -hmm. It just uh, came. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a powerful uh, steroid ointment. Right. Now, ointment is rather sticky and gooey, so I apologise for that. But the reason I'm giving it is that the absorption of a, an ointment is much better. All right. So yeah. I want you to use those on all of the blistering areas. Right. Thank you very much. Good. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Bye bye, sir. Bye now. What's going around in my mind is whether this is to do with pain that's stopping you doing this or whether it's deep enough that you might have cut something that needs more attention, right? And I'm not sure is the honest answer. Okay, OK. So I'm going to have a chat with the on-call plastic surgeons about this just to see what, whether they're willing to have a look at it today and see what they make of the function, right? Is that going to be OK for work-wise and stuff? You're looking a bit worried. Sorry. It, I, I, I think it's... I think pain it's pretty deep. I don't think it's a tendon. Well, that's what, that's the reason yeah. why I'm, I'm going to ask yeah. them. And they're going to stay, they're going to, they're going to say one or two things to me. They're going to say, well, you know, maybe it's just some information, see how it goes. Well, then we get you to come back, and in which case I'll come down and I'll let you know either way, right? Okay. Um, or they're going to say, well, if you're not sure, we'll have a look, okay. and then they, then they'll assess it. Okay. We've got a nurse downstairs who's just going to clean this up for us. So, do you want to come with me? Yeah, brilliant. I've got Stephanie. Just got to get that there. So I look cool. That's all right. <laughs> Oh, hi there. My name's Mr. I'm one of the GPs from Farnham Road Surgery. Can I talk to you about a patient, please? A glass broke while he was doing the washing up, so he's got a laceration to his dominant hand, his right hand. But I can't tell how deep it is, but it's quite granulated over the top. So I don't know whether he's done any sort of tendon damage underneath that or whether this is just because of the inflammation from the cuts. I was wondering whether you'd be able to have a look. How quick should that referral be? How urgent should I put it? OK, fine. That's perfect. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So basically, um, 
I sort out the referral, which I'll do today, yeah. and we'll fax it off to them. Um, in the next two weeks, if you haven't heard from Plastics, then about a clinic appointment with them, then I want you to let us know. OK, yeah. like you say, it's, yeah, just, it's just all cut up, isn't it? So then the thing with this is that if they review it and they say to you, you know what, we're really not worried about this, then the next thing will be to make sure that that stiffness doesn't remain as bad as it is yeah. now. So they might send you some physiotherapy. So there might still be an impact on your work for a little while to come, Maybe not as bad as having to take the whole time. But it's not being able to drive and do something. Really. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll have to figure that out as we go yeah, along, depending on, depending on what they make of it. That's your sick note, and it's from today for two weeks. Okay. I'd shake your hand, but I don't I'll think do I, want to, one, I, I don't think I want to cause you any more pain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. No, seriously, thank you so much. Take care. Like, See you. Bye. It's Dr. Oh. Heider. Come through and have a seat. Thanks. Are you mum? Yes, I am. How can I help you today, Cohen? I know you've had some back pain, haven't you? Yeah. When did it all start? The school phoned me to say that he had this severe pain in his back. OK. And if I could drop some paracetamol down, but it just got too bad for him. He was yeah. crying in pain and then okay. he still got it. It's just kind of come out of nowhere. Yeah. It's just that he's cried with it and that's not like him. Yeah, yeah. So how did it start when you were at school? What were you doing at the time? I now got on a coach. And that's when it started, but I don't know how. The it school was that the school bus? The, yeah. yeah. Okay. So in the morning, yeah. And then was the pain bad at that point, or did it get worse later? It got worse later on, and then it just stayed like that. Okay. And whereabouts in your back does it hurt? Um, it's around here. The middle bit of your back. Yeah, and then lower down up to like there. All right. Any problems going to the toilet to wee or poo? No. Is that normal? Yep. OK, and any numbness or weakness or tingling, like a strange sensation in your legs at all? My legs feel a little bit dead. Which one? Of both, both of them, them, but they're just down here. OK, all right. It's and a any... bit hard to walk, but... Is it because you've got pain walking or it feels numb when you're walking? I don't really know. It just feels weird when I walk. Now, would it be all right to examine your back? Yeah? yeah. Okay. And your mum can sit on there and then you'll be with them as well. You sure, yeah. OK. Back pain can be a symptom of something quite serious in children. Most commonly, it's because of a muscular problem or a bone or joint problem in the spine. But more worryingly, it could be related to infection or even something as serious as a tumour. So I'm going to just test a few things with your arms and legs. Are you OK sitting for now? Yeah. Can you put your arms up like this? Stop me from pushing you down. OK, stop me from pushing them up. Put your arms like this. Push me away. Pull me towards you. That's fine. OK. Is it OK if I just get you to take your trousers off? No. I can. Take your trainers off. She's going to need to... She might feel your feet as well. Yes. I'll get you I to will, push yeah. your feet. So you need to take it all off. OK. He's ready. OK. So if you can lie down for me on the bed. I'm going to just touch your legs to start with. Can you feel me touching you? Yeah. Is it about the same on both sides or different? It's the same. Now if I can get you to just sit with your legs hanging over the end. I'm just going to test the reflexes in your knees. If your child is experiencing back pain, the serious signs and symptoms to look out for are numbness, weakness and tingling of the arms or legs and any bowel or bladder problems, so if they've lost sensation when they're going to the toilet. Does it seem to be anything? So, from examining him, everything looks to be OK. Yeah. Um, it's a bit unusual to have the pain and the numbness, though. Yeah. So, I think, for now, because the examination's normal, seeing yeah. how he goes over the next week or so with painkillers would be reasonable. Yeah, OK. And then I'll book him back in to see me and then re-examine okay. again and, and see if things have got better. Yeah, that's fine, okay. no problem. OK, thank you. OK. Right. OK, so did you hear what I was saying to your mum? Things seem to be fine from examining you, but I'd like to speak to your mum next week just to see how you're getting on. Yeah? And if you know better, I'll get you back in and we'll take another look at you. Good. OK. OK, then. All right, Thanks take so care, then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If anybody's got an appointment, you can use the self-check-in screen on your right-hand side. If you've got an appointment, please use the self-check-in machine. Has anybody else got appointments? Can you try and use the self-check-in? 
If anyone has an appointment, please check in on the self check in. Hi, Jim. Come in. Hi, I'm Dr. Sheikh. Have your seat, please. Right, how can I help you today? Um, I um, have been experiencing some uh, nipple tenderness. Um, and I'll be honest, about maybe a month, maybe two months, I had a little bit of discharge. And then it went away. What colour was it? Um, it was sort of a creamy colour and then it went slightly bloody. Did it? Yeah. But because it hadn't come back and it wasn't spontaneous, okay. um, I sort of didn't worry about it. But um, the last, I'd say, probably week, my nipple, my nipple has been quite tender. Which one? The left. <clears throat> and was it the same nipple that you had the discharge yeah. to? Yeah. OK. <laughs> um, and I had um, discharge this morning. So cream in the beginning yeah, and with it, a little bit of blood. And then it went was slightly it fresh clear. blood? Um, it was more like a bloody discharge. Right. But I only stopped breastfeeding in January, so okay. I wasn't sure whether it was connected or not. OK. Did you have pain at that time? No. No pain? No. The okay. pain's only been really in the last week. Did you do any self-examination to feel for any lumps? I, I've had a feel, but not... There's nothing that I have I have felt. OK. Um, any family history of any breast problems or breast cancer? On my um, dad's side, there was breast cancer. Right. And his who sisters, had it? Uh, his sister. And how old was she? Um, I think she was in her late 40s. Late 40s? Yes. OK. We'll have to examine, yeah? Sorry. So if you can take yeah. your T-shirt off okay. and your bra off. So just tell me when you're ready. OK, yeah? Ready? Yeah. Right, I'm going to examine your right breast okay. first, OK? If you are in any pain, just let me know. So there's no been any discharge from the right? No. Show me your hand, just try and relax, yeah? OK. And it's not tender as well? It's a, a little, little bit, bit tender, but yeah. But not, not much. Okay. That's tender. That's tender. If you can give me your yeah. hand again. Just relax, yeah. I couldn't feel any obvious lumps. Yeah. Okay. I can't feel any okay. lumps That's good. Yeah. under your armpits as well. OK, get dressed and just uh, you can come and sit here when you're ready. OK. Now, with these symptoms, were you thinking about anything? I thought maybe it was an abscess from, from in the milk ducts because of the breast... or, you know, stopping the breastfeeding and stuff. And I also wondered if it's hormonal. Sometimes when women breastfeed and they stop, sometimes they experience milky discharge. Yeah. yeah. But we do worry when it is bled with it. OK. There are quite a few non-cancerous reasons you know, yes. for the milky discharge, which you rightly said. Uh, but it, I would still um, suggest we refer you to the breast clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because of the family history. Yeah. And second, because it is on one side. Okay. So what we normally would do is we refer under two weeks, okay. which is a cancer referral. Okay. I can't feel any lumps, yeah. so that is reassuring. But please come back because we need to okay. explore the other reasons. Can I come back and see you? Yeah. yeah? OK, yeah. all right, lovely. Yeah. OK, okay. Thank you all right, much. take care. Bye-bye. That's lovely, thank you. How are you today? Not too bad. Um, problems with my left foot. OK. I've been to A&E. Yeah. They reckon I've torn my tendons. Oh, I see. OK. Now, this all happened in April after you tripped over your dog, is that right? Yeah. OK. Pop your shoe off for me. It's the only shoes I can get on. Is that tender? Yeah, very tender there. Any pain underneath the foot? No, I just get a burning feeling. All around the top there, where I was pressing. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where all the, all that bit. Okay. Because you're getting ongoing pain with this, I'm going to refer you up to the orthopaedic surgeons with them to have a look at this. They may want to do further imaging to have a look and see what's going on. Does that make sense? Because for you to have pain ongoing since April, oh, it's ridiculous. It is getting ridiculous now. We need to get. I, I'm pain. struggling. In the interim, I'm going to give you some pain, some good pain relief. Which pain relief do you want at the moment? I've been taking 
Well, I've been taking everything. If you can, I can get my hands on that. <laughs> no. Um, co... Co... co Yeah. I've been taking uh, paracetamol, ibuprofen. I'll give you some more co because that's an excellent painkiller. The thing with um, co is it can constipate you. That's one of the main side effects. I suffer big time like that anyway. When you took the co did you have a lot of trouble with the constipation? Yeah. Sometimes I can go two, three weeks without going to... Gosh. OK. What I'm going to do then, when I give you the cocoa, I'm going to cover you with a laxative as well. And also, I'm going to put my hands up. I haven't been taking my insulin because I haven't had none. <laughs> Come and have a seat down there. So, how is it...? It's all right. It's not so bad as it used to be. Yeah. I've just been cleaning it much more regular. I've had a bath, oh, it's still so. pretty bad, though, yeah, isn't it? It's still bad, but... Did we decide on taking out the whole nail or leaving yeah, it stuck in did, the middle? Yeah, we did, yeah. Take the whole nail out. OK. And uh, have you had local anaesthetics before? Yeah. Like against dentists, no problems with those? No. OK, so the idea is, if we take this nail off and yeah. it grows out wide again, this whole situation might come back again. Yeah. Where it's all inflamed. So we put a chemical here called phenol, which effectively burns the bit where the nail grows on that side. So hopefully yeah. it will grow out not as wide, so it's less likely to okay. cause you problems, yeah? And then take everything off, dress it, You've got to come back tomorrow for a dressing appointment. Okay. Is that going to be all right? That's fine with me. All right, so this is the consent form. There's your details there. All right, so it's a reasonably low risk procedure, but there are risks, especially yeah. with the toe when it comes to infection. So I stubbed my toe like two days ago, and that hurt. That must be horrendous. So... Yeah. It hasn't happened to me yet, but there is a chance that it doesn't grow back at all. Um... If it doesn't grow back, that'd be perfect. Whenever yeah, you I prefer it. If you've got any questions, then fire away. Otherwise, if you're happy. So and we'll get started. You can come and see me. I'll take distracting, screaming, swearing, whatever you like, as long as you keep the, foot, the toe really still, OK? So first, scroll up, straps come in. You all right? Mm-hmm. This is a bit that uh, you'll know if you can feel it. <laughs> OK, so just tell me, can you feel any of that? If you feel pushing, that's yeah. fine, right? If it's sharp, then tell me. Any ground, is it? And also, I'm going to put my hands up. I haven't been taking my insulin because I haven't had none. <laughs> I'm diabetic as well. OK, Joe, that's massively important. Insulin. I know it's massively important. Yes. And I had it on repeat prescription at the pharmacy down by me. Yes. Um, then they went for a stage where they can't get a hold of the one that I was on. So you haven't had your Lantus since last September? Yeah. So it's been a year. Me and doctors, I don't like coming down to the doctors <laughs> unless I really have to. OK. I'm going to give you a blood test form. I want you to get an urgent blood test done, OK? I want you to try and get it done today. Yeah. I'm going to book you into our diabetic clinic with one of our diabetic doctors because they need to have a look and see what's going on with your diabetic control. Does that make sense? The risk of di uncontrolled diabetes, a heart attack, stroke, you know... You I've can... already had one heart attack and I've already had a mini stroke which has affected my sight. So that puts your risks even higher. So let's get this sorted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze you in with the diabetic doctor next Thursday. What I want you to do is I want you to record your sugars four times a day, OK? So before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner and before bed. And um, bring those readings in when you see Dr Nanda next week. You can then have a look at it and decide what insulin regime we should get you back on. I will go. I will go, definitely. Superstar. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. No trouble. Lovely to meet you, Jenna. Thank you. Bye-bye now. This is just normal cream, OK? It's just to protect your skin on the other side while I do the chemical bit. 
So it's going to stay numb for a few hours, but you should be able to walk and still wait a bit because you can still use the ball of your foot, so that should be all right. All right, Julie's going to dress it for you. So the really important thing from today is that it stays completely dry once we've done the dressing, because if you get it wet, then the chances of it getting infected are much higher. You'll be able to use nail polish again in no time. <laughs> yeah. OK, darling, there you go. Thank you. Good stuff. Thank Take care, much. OK, no problem. I hope it settles. <laughs> <laughs> See you now. <laughs> Take care. See ya. Block worked really well on that one. Hello. This is Holly. Yes, hi, I'm a medical student. Nice to meet you. Right, here. Do you want to take a history? Have you got a headache? Yeah. The average consultation time in the UK is 12 and a half minutes. And that means before you even start your surgery, you know that you're going to overrun. Hayden Ford? In the GP training programme, we learn time management techniques and aim to deal with problems in 10 minutes. Felicity! Increasingly, we are having to deal with more complex medical problems that require far more than 10 minutes to really get down to the bottom of. It's like we play darts on a Wednesday night. It's, it's, yeah, sorry to bring you back, because we're a bit short of time today. I'm prepared to bend the 10-minute consultation rule when I have a patient in front of me that clearly needs more of my time. If we deal with four or five problems in yeah. 10 minutes, then we, it doesn't work. we don't want to miss anything. Yeah. We want to make sure that we treat it effectively. Of course, that of sense. course. You've got a good going over today, believe me. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Take care. Gosh, the clock pressure's huge. So that's about 30 minutes. I know, that took me absolutely ages. Yeah, but you went through everything, and you went through it very well and very methodically and logically. You do have to live with risk and uncertainty. But if you can say, do you know what, I feel comfortable, I'm not going to worry about that. If you're going out and going home worrying about a consultation, you maybe should have done this or that, it's often worth just giving the ring and getting it done or something. And you can't have that number of things playing in your mind. No, you just, get mad. You go mad. Come on in. Hi. OK. How are you getting on? Yeah, good. Perfect, good. Uh, let's talk about the rheumatoid. I know we didn't really mention that last time we, we caught up. Um, you last saw the rheumatologist in August, didn't you, actually, mm -hmm. not, not too long ago. So how are things from that point of view? Yeah, I would say it's mostly fine, I think. Yeah. Um, my knees do... My knees and feet do have the tendency to still uh, swell okay. occasionally. Okay. But I think apart from that, I think everything is still very firmly under wraps. Good, good, OK. And uh, uh, just reading from the letter, I think the good thing is she didn't find any evidence of any what we call active inflammation in the joints, which is obviously the thing we worry about with arthritis um, because that can start to kind of damage the joints. So thankfully that's not the case. So long term, going forward, um, I don't think this should have any implications in, in terms of your mobility, in terms of the actual structure of your joints. Um, I think really the priority will be to try and help you to manage your pain. Mm -hmm. Your rheumatologist felt that there were some elements of your condition that were more in keeping with a condition called fibromyalgia. I don't know if that was explained to okay, you and, yeah. and, and sort of chronic pain. Holly was diagnosed with a condition called juvenile idiopathic arthritis, um, which is a type of arthritis that affects young people. About a year ago, she was uh, also diagnosed with a condition called fibromyalgia, which is similar and can cause pain uh, all over the body, mainly in the muscle groups. Were you referred to a psychologist? Yeah, I started a pain management group Friday just gone. You just recently? Mm -hmm. Brilliant, OK. Psychotherapy is no longer really a controversial method of treatment for chronic pain. A number of uh, different types of therapy, including cognitive behavioural therapy, or CBT, are often used as well as meditation and even hypnotherapy. And really the main thrust of all of these treatments is to try and help uh, change patients' perception of their pain and change the way in which it affects their day-to-day -day life. So it's yeah. not something, unfortunately, that will kind of go away magically with the things that we're giving you, but hopefully with the psychotherapy and the special sessions that you're going to be having that will give you the kind of tools to, to manage it a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and just um, 
a bit more about yourself. Are you, are you working at the moment or yeah. no? Okay. College. You're at college. Fine. Okay. And how are things with that? Um, it's all going pretty well yeah. so far, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. So I think we carry on going as we are. Um, obviously, hopefully, you get benefit from the sessions. If you need our help with anything, if you feel that um, things are kind of going back downhill again, you know, you can always chat to us. Were there any sort of questions that you no. had or any concerns? No, I think we're all good. Good. Awesome. All right. Take Thank care. You very much. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Hi there, Leanne. Come in. All right, what can we do for you today? Um, it's just a couple of quick things. Yes. Um, first one, to get over really quickly, these little um, skin tags. Yes. How can I get them off? Because I'm getting loads. Uh, let me see. That one's the main one, the big uh -huh. one, which is getting... It gets caught up in my neck, okay. it rubs on it, and I've got uh, a few on my arm and that. Okay. Because they're very small, you twist them and then you can sort of cut them off. Mm -hmm. Sometimes put a little bit of local anaesthetic in. But there's a little minor operation. Yeah. Um, but it would be very quick, it's quick yeah. um, and what we do is sort of snip it off and then we cauterise the base just to stop it bleeding. Stop it, yeah. And that's pretty easy to do. It's very, I, I want to do it, but I'm a bit wussy, so... No, don't, <laughs> yeah, it's not a good idea, because it, it will, you could do it, but it will just yeah. be... Right, OK, okay. so... That's so the right. first thing. OK, I can do that for you. The other thing I need, at the moment, because I'm going through trauma therapy a right. lot, and right. it's okay. brought a lot of problems back up. Yeah. And at the moment, I'm getting very, not just anxious, but I'm getting very angry as right, well. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm struggling to control it. Yeah. And I was just wondering if there's anything that I can be given or get or something to try and Bring taper it down. It down. Uh -huh. I'll get also but quite emotional, which isn't me. I don't yeah. cry for England, so yeah. just very... And the therapy sort of mm. sometimes is, is making that sort of come out, do you think? It is. From, yeah, something happened in my past and obviously now it's been all brought back up. So. Okay. And sometimes that's what therapy does. Mm -hmm. um, and there are things we can do to try and help reduce some of the anxiety. It may not get the anger down, but if you make you less anxious mm -hmm. and sometimes a little bit sort of more stable, then you can sort of cope with the therapy. Because that's what's bit. happening. I think I'm getting so high up, I've started, yeah. like, cutting and stuff like that again, right, which I haven't okay. done for months yeah. and months and months. And you don't so. want, you're not going to do anything more serious than that, are you? There's something not right with us. Yeah, I'm having a problem with my printer. Do you want me to just shut it off and then turn it back on? Where did that go to? I was fighting with my printer. No, it's definitely not working, that. I'm getting so high up, I've started yeah. like cutting and stuff like that again, right, which I okay. haven't done for months yeah. and months and months. And you don't so. want, you're not going to do anything more serious than that, are you? I think you've always got those feelings there anyway yeah. when you're depressed and everything's yeah. going on, that always there. So, but you no, have them. Have you done anything about them? No, no, no. I've said them. The, the cutting? Mm. Yeah. And do you find the cutting's a bit of a release for you? It does, but I mean, I used to work with the ambulance service, so I know it doesn't help, yeah. you know, but at the time, I think I'll get to that pinnacle where you're like, yeah. what do I do? Okay. And yeah. You know, as I said, that's, that's when Things I happen. do it. And yes, it helps, but then, because after you've got the guilt, so... Okay, so it doesn't... It, it's a short-term relief, but... And, and it's very difficult to sort of explain that sometimes to other people. Mm, um, but I, I can completely understand that. Mm. What I would say is that, you know, if there is anything else you can do just before that happens, like ring or talk to somebody, you may not be able to, mm. then try and do that rather than cutting yourself. Obviously, you know, it's a difficult period. And what I'll do is I'll give you one of the antidepressants that is used to help with anxiety as well, okay. to see if that then can help with it. Brilliant. Is that all right? Thank you very much, That's yeah. Okay. Be lovely. There's definitely a stigma attached to self-harm, and people generally don't want to talk about it. But if we can break that, we can give people help. And we know that teaching people to deal with those crises of emotion can stop them doing things to harm themselves and sometimes stop them committing suicide. Everybody thinks I'm quite a, like a bubbly person and talkative and, and you just think you don't know the half of it behind the closed doors, isn't it? But I'm getting there. It's a facade and you've probably been had years of practice mm -hmm. of putting on a facade so people don't you know. Do. Big face. And a yeah. happy face, but underneath you're just crumbling. sort of crumbling <laughs> and you need a little bit of help. Mm. 
Um, if things get really bad, yeah. one of the, I don't know if you've ever done it, but Samaritans are very good. Mm -hmm. And just ring that. They make no judgments. They give somebody to talk to. And sometimes mm. just having that ability, and it's not somebody you know, and it's That's not somebody related. It's got family, it not takes friends. a lot of that away. Mm. And, and they're very good at doing that. I mean, it has helped a lot of people. And sometimes you just need something to stop you making that action. And this yeah. keeps you sort of stopped long enough to, for it to pass away. That's and thing, that's what yeah. you need. You need it to pass mm -hmm. over because otherwise you have to do something to get you through. That's and right. what you've learned is if I cut, then it goes away, but it comes back feeling guilty. But it's a, mm -hmm. and you need to unlearn but that. But it gets rid of that first. It gets first, that first impulse. <laughs> yeah, you sort of feel like you're on the edge of a hill and you think, oh, well, do something. Yeah. But... but if we can get, and once you can stop that, you know, then, mm -hmm. but it's a difficult time for you, I can appreciate it. And sometimes that's all it needs, isn't it? It's just that little bit of extra <clears throat> help. You know I hate what? asking for help. I'm one of the worst, but... You know, if, if you'd broken your leg and I said, here's a crutch, you'd yeah, have said, you'd fine. It, yeah. If your mind's not working as it should mm. do, it's a little bit of help to get you through a difficult period, come out and mm. you then get on and live your life yeah. again. And that's, that's all true. it is. It's, not, it's no different to that. Very true. Hey, that is brilliant. OK, Thank nice you to meet you. Take care you. and Bye -bye. see you again. OK. Bye-bye. <laughs> How are you, Margaret? Ah, nice to meet you. Thank you for seeing me. No trouble. How are you? Uh, not brilliant, but OK. I, I've come in because my, my nurse asked me to come in and see you. Um, I've written it down because I won't remember no otherwise. No <laughs> uh, the not-so-good news under the circumstances is that in 10 days I've lost about six pounds, okay. which is too much. I couldn't eat, and what I did eat, zoomed. I really couldn't face it. So you're having diarrhoea? Um, yes. How long has the diarrhoea been going on for? 10, 12 days. And I mean, it, uh, I've never not been able to walk, you know, and that I mm. literally didn't... I could stagger, but I just didn't. I mean, it's ridiculous. May I have a feel of your tummy? Yeah. This is, um, the, funny enough, the tummy is behaving itself, you know? I haven't had lack of pain for a long time. OK. So I'm just going to gently press. Having said I haven't got any pain when you touch her, I have. <laughs> is it sore when I'm pushing now? Or? There. Yeah, there. Thank you. Yeah. Now listen to the tummy. Good. Jump out down for me. Margaret was diagnosed with a form of kidney cancer in 2009, and in 2015 it was discovered that she had a recurrence. She was currently enlisted in a trial under the specialists, and she is undergoing treatment for this. Now, there's a few things that we are going to do, Margaret. Because you've had 14 days of diarrhoea, it absolutely could be a side effect of your medication. However, I just want to make sure that there's no other cause or other reason why you would be having the diarrhoea. Right. So I'm going to get, ask you to send off two stool samples for me. When was the last time you had any blood tests? Every six weeks. Because you're getting the ongoing diarrhoea, I'm going to request my own. I think this is just a little glitch, and then we'll be off and running again. You Absolutely. Know? So here is what we are going to do. Okay, so that's your blood test form. Thank so you. you book that in at your convenience. You can get that done here. These are the stool samples. Have you ever given a stool sample before, yeah. Margaret? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. I'm calm under fire. <laughs> <laughs> It is important to make sure that we you know, yeah. prioritise the most important ones. And, you know, the weight loss, ongoing diarrhoea is definitely something that we need to get sorted. I want to chase your oncology appointment to get a review with them, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you something to help you with the weight, OK? And come back in and see us, Margaret. If this isn't settling down, I definitely need to come Don't back worry, and see I'll be here. Again. Thank you. I think you've had the ten minutes now, more, actually. Don't worry. The ten minutes is only a guide. It's more important than making sure that we manage you as a patient effectively. Every individual, <laughs> every individual is an individual. 
So add this to your blood test as well and get these things sorted. If it's not settling down, we definitely need to see you. Give us a call a week after you've done the stool sample okay, to find out the don't results. you worry, I won't mess around. I tend to make 10 years at very, least. Very good. At least. <laughs> good. I wish all my patients were like you. I'll take care. Love you too. Thank leave. you. All right, darling. <laughs> <laughs> bye now, bye. Thank you so much. No bye. trouble. Bye bye now. Is that all right? It's fantastic. See you later. Okay, okay. Bye, bye. Ashley. See you later. Bye. Be careful driving. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, he is so sweet. <laughs> bye. bye.